All right, welcome to Big Data in Brews. We're here live at Strata plus Hadoop World in San Jose, one of the biggest big data events in the industry. I'm Andrew Brust, and I'm here with Ted Dunning from MapR and also a number of important open source projects in the big data world. There's, uh, there's a ton of stuff that we can talk about, but you know, this is big data and brews, and despite the morning time slot, we thought you were going to, ah, uh, that's your brew. That's All right. right. All right. A little um, bit of tea. And I have, uh, I have trade show coffee. <laughs> it's, it's been that kind of a week. I was at another trade show in San Francisco yesterday, so oh. I'm uh, any port in a storm in terms of my brews. So not, not so terrible. Um, let's talk about some of the things that are going on in the big data market and maybe some of the things that can help tame uh, those phenomena. So it just seems like there's not only a lot of vendors, but a lot of different um, technologies competing to be standards. There really are a lot, of, a lot of things. And there's also a lot of churn within things that are relatively standard. Agreed. That makes it really hard for people to, to get on with what they need to do. Right. It's, uh, it's not as bad as it looks, though. I mean, there are new projects popping up all the time. But most of them now, we're, we're getting back to kind of open source as it was. I've been in open source since, I shouldn't say this, 40 years now. And uh, we're getting back a lot to where it started, which was people, technical people, working together to make a broad consensus. And we're beginning to see consensus around a lot of things. One of them lately that's really good is the Kafka API. Okay. And op what open source builds best is not necessarily the source code or the code itself. What it builds best are good standards around APIs. And that's what distinguishes Hadoop from the NoSQL world, for instance. NoSQL, sadly, because there's some really good ideas there, has islandized. Uh, it's a bit, there's and pockets it's a long of ways from one island to another. Yeah. 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 So it's very frustrating. So it's all this cool stuff right. doesn't interoperate at all. Whereas you get multiple vendors in the dupe world, and you know, Cloudera, Mike Olson says there are no barriers to interoperability between the major distributions. And that means that the dupe world is vastly bigger than the NoSQL world. Right at comparable levels of excitement and, and invention. I'm a little confused though, because you're with MapR, and uh, one of the things you guys do really well is start with open source stuff and um, put some very special value on top, starting well, actually, all the way with the file system. Yeah, start, in, in many ways what we do is put the special value underneath as a foundation, a solid foundation. But we very, very committed to open APIs. Okay. We think that the implementation is a fine thing to innovate around. Uh, but open APIs like POSIX, open APIs like HDFS, uh, Yarn, uh, Mesos, and now Kafka. Kafka is a very, very important open API. The 0 0.9 API version was a big step forward because it hid, there were a lot of loose springs in the older APIs for Kafka. It's now really good abstraction boundary. And Kafka, of course, is an open source project mm -hmm. around streaming data, not stream yeah. processing, but kind of a publish, subscribe, message bus approach to streaming, right? Yeah, and the, the, there's one technical innovation that was big, big in Kafka, and that is that messages can only be acknowledged in order. Mm. And ordering is a key thing. Older types of message queues would acknowledge whoever got to a message next, and that out of order acknowledgement meant that consumers had a high coordination burden. Right. And especially if you wanted to persist the messages and consume them, you couldn't persist and get performance. It was one or the other when you needed both. Whereas Kafka Gets treats both. it almost a little bit more like a chronological log. Very, right. very much more. Yeah. yeah. And, and that seems like an odd restriction when just viewed from the, I want more power. But in fact, that restriction led to far better performance with persistence. And that leads to isolation of components, which means a team can be focused on their task, not have to worry about everybody else messing them up. Right, so there's some abstraction. That's huge. So that huge. a team can have their own context 
and not have it interfere. So that API, that that technology, seems to have a, a caught on a caught an adoption wave that's gone pretty pretty uh, pretty fast and furious. Because now, we've been needing that for a long time. Right. And so how at MapR, how have you well, how have again, you adopted that? Again, APIs are critical here. We also see that at really large scale or really critical uh, applications, Kafka is not enough. There are limitations. One example, suppose you want to track all the containers on all the ships in the world. The natural thing is to have one topic per container, and a container reports in wherever it is, what ship it's on, what port it's in. Right. But that means right away, six million topics. And it means global, bi-directional, very flexible replication. Neither of which is what Kafka does. So what Kafka has done really well is drive the adoption of that philosophy and API, has a basic implementation, which is excellent right. for that basic need. And then, like MapR has done over and over again, we take an open API and extend it to major enterprise sorts of needs and situations. Now you guys talk about your converged data um, platform, can you Give us a little bit of architectural understanding for that. Yeah, there are critical needs. If you're going to build applications, you still need files. If somebody hands you a five gigabyte video, it's not appropriate as a message. It's not appropriate in a table. That should be a file. Okay. And various things, like a friend of mine runs Minecraft on MapR. It goes and modifies tables, or files. And that's because that's what files have always done. So we've, we felt that was an important API. Tables are a critical resource. In a microservice world, those are typically local to a service, not shared. We can share them, but I think it's better designed for tables to be the reification of a stream of updates. Okay. And private. And then streams. We think all three are really important constructs, and we think that they belong in the same platform so you can have consistent management, consistent administration, consistent permissions and authorization. And physically the same cluster, correct? May or may not be. Uh, within a single cluster, you may want to isolate different kinds of data for SLA reasons, for technology sure. reasons, licensing reasons. You often need more than one data center. I mean, in the ship's example, you might want a little tiny data center. It's probably about that big on a ship. You may want one in each port. So it, it but you guys quickly. can handle it together, Absolutely. whereas I think some other distros have a little more trouble with that. They, right. they, don't, they didn't have that. 2009, when our founders really started and set the vision, they said they needed this kind of convergence. They needed this globality and this enterprise robustness and solidity. That makes sense. Uh, and that's, that's been our goal and our vision ever since. We couldn't release it initially because it took years to develop this stuff. Right. But it has been the vision, and it's now beginning to be really fully fledged. Fully realized. And, yeah. So let's pivot a little, but only a little, to talk about in-memory technology, because streaming data is often very um, tightly correlated with that. Yeah. In memory, as a as a topic, not a Q and topic topic, but a in plain English topic in general, has been huge in the industry in the last 12 months. But it, here again, it seems like a lot of different um, implementations and standards have uh, emerged. Now, you're part of a new open source project that yeah. aims to kind of consolidate a lot of that. Consolidate some of it. Uh, there are a couple of different needs that go under the rubric of in memory. And the one that we've been focusing on, so this is coming out of Apache Drill. Mm -hmm. Drill pioneered an in memory columnar representation right. that would allow very fast flow like processing of data. The things that make processing slow are copying the data right. and reformatting the data, which is an expensive form of copying. And the in-memory form for drill was called value vectors. It was very successful at representing not just columnar data, but nested complex data. In-memory, columnar, very right. vectorizable. Because drill's dialect of SQL appreciates hierarchy and And allows. late typing instead of strict typing and things like that. It's kind of the JavaScript of the SQL world. Wow, okay, uh, that's a good way to think of it. Loose it up, late but binding. do, and just-in-time compilation. Right. So that was really valuable. But unfortunately, drill is pretty visible. And 
unfortunately much identified with MAPR. We, we're trying to open that community as much as possible. Right. There's Hortonworks, there's Cloudera people involved in it, but it has a little bit of identification. Mm -hmm. And so Drill has spawned a bit more neutrally identified projects. We helped spawn CalSight. We, we pioneered the use of Optique, which was the query optimizer and parser from the eigenbases originally, uh, Mondrian, the database, and that got spun out into CalSight. It's now being used by probably a dozen Apache projects. Okay. So we were able to make it a more neutral, not a product project, and we've now spun out Aero, which is the value vectors out of Drill. That Drill is in Java though, about. but Aero is language neutral. Right. And so already Wes McKinnon has been implementing this for, he's the author of Pandas, one of the uh -huh. major movements in the Python scientific computing world, and he's been implementing this for Python world. And so he's got C++ implementations of value vectors, and we're beginning to see some really big speed ups. Just uh, to use a little bit of French, in the bullshit side of the computation, <laughs> the stuff that you're doing in it's order good to. Good thing get, I didn't bring beer. Or we'd yeah. be all over the place by now. But it, it's just you know all the stuff that the bureaucracy of doing data processing can yeah. really slow you down. And Arrow is making that better. There's a new file format called Feather uh, coming out of that, which is just that in-memory format dropped right on disk. Okay. And Arrow also allows you to take that in-memory format, send it over a wire, no serialization. Serialization's another copy. Right. And so you can get rid of that bureaucratic side of, it starts with BU, it's the same idea, uh, side of the computation. And also Arrow is... This allows different products and technologies to share the data without it kind of thunking through layers from right. one to the other, right? Right, and, the, and it's... Uh, there's more it's of that It's kind agility. of neutral ground as well. Right. So uh, there were 12 major open source projects that had representatives in Arrow from the beginning. It's a very unusual thing. It's a direct to top level project because right. there's so much expertise. Is that a first ever? No, 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 no. There have been half a dozen, maybe. Okay. Maybe, maybe only three. So, it did, but it didn't go through the incubator. It no. went straight to top level uh, at the and Apache software. As VP Foundation. of incubator at Apache, I'm proud to say that because okay. <laughs> there was plenty of expertise in how Apache works on okay. that project. A lot of very senior people. Right. And the project is going a million miles an hour. And, and a lot a, of the code was already mature, right? Because it was the a Java spin side. Okay. But you see, we're going to get it in. You're many doing languages. other implementations. That's sure. really exciting. Right. So that we can have neutral ground where a lot of projects can cooperate. And like I said, that gets back to the, the roots of open source, which are techies doing cool stuff across companies. Right. And that across companies means that we build a bigger market because we share a common tradition, a common technological tradition that lets us not put up artificial fences. And how many other companies are involved? I, I thought it was something like eight well, you know, altogether. The cool thing is, I don't know how many companies. Ah, uh, okay, you've lost count I know at there's this point. No, 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 no. I know how many projects uh -huh. are represented, but people are, as they should in Apache, participating as individuals more than as company representatives. Right, right. well that makes and sense. Love that. But it seems like you have some of the advantages of a vendor consortium without a lot of the tax that that normally incurs um, because it is an open source project and it's not a it's not a, a club it's not a cabal of vendors it's simply that people from different vendors are able to contribute resources absolutely and it's not a marketing ploy or activity because it isn't something that customers are going to say I want Apache arrow right because it isn't usable by end users it's not going to become an end user brand. Right. Which means that that marketing PR pressure, Goes which is away. natural in a company, because you want the company to survive. Right. But it's not brought to bear on it. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. I think we covered quite a lot, actually. That and must be the tea instead of the beer. <laughs> <laughs> we both talked. We too should fast. try that some more. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on Big Data and and whatever brews we brews. Got. Yeah. yeah.